I always think it's just a little bit funny, brothers and sisters, that John has to mention that he beat Peter to the tomb. <laughs> and then Peter's, dis, Peter's secretary, Mark, has to make it known that, that um, it was John and his brother James who asked Jesus to sit at his right and at his left and kind of got the chagrined when they realized that the story would be that they'd have to suffer. So these little rippings aside, we see today that we are celebrating this feast of John the Evangelist and Apostle, who is also known as the beloved disciple. But John is also someone who represents every single one of us because we are all the beloved of Jesus. Jesus died for every single one of us for the same exact reason. And you think I'm about to say because of our sins. No. Well, yes, but not just because of our sins. Jesus died for every single one of us that we might have life and life in abundance. And it's John that brings that out most clearly. We could say that John is the apostle par excellence that speaks of the mystical life, that of union with Christ. He's the one who gives us the clearest teaching about the Eucharist being Jesus' body and blood, his soul and divinity. Well, soul and divinity, that was Thomas Aquinas, but his body and his blood. Today, in contemplating the life of St. John, we know that like the other apostles, he suffered for the faith. He was tortured. He was not killed. That's why you will find sources that say that he was a martyr, And then you might scratch your head and say, but didn't he die of old age? Yes and yes. So anybody who suffered for the faith, even if it was just to be be tortured, was called a martyr back in the early church. Uh, But more specifically, we, of course, think of martyrs as those who have died instead of renouncing the faith. So just in case you come across this idea that John is a martyr, you'll know. Ah, Father Chris said, remember. He's a martyr because he suffered a witness, but he didn't die in that torture. So we ask the Lord today for the kind of intimacy that John the Evangelist had. We don't look at the lives of these saints simply to look at them and say, oh, look, how special were they? No. If Jesus gave John that grace to be drawn intimately to his side, to his very heart, then that means that Jesus can do the same with us too, and even greater. It's a little holy competition, right? Just like Peter, or or, uh, John beat Peter to the tomb, we can ask the Lord, Lord, give us that little bit of holy competition, and, and draw us even closer than John the Apostle was to your heart. Amen.